Today on Worth It. We're doing three different wine pairings at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Today we're taking a more casual approach to wine pairings. We're not gonna be adhering to any strict rules. We're following very specific things like no red wine and fish together. But more so we're visiting places that have intentional food and wine married together. Ooh. Great food and great wine served at the same place. I like that. Let's break all the rules. All right, Stephen, we're on our way to our first wine pairing. We're going to Milk Farm. We're gonna be speaking with Leah about her ham brie and butter sandwich, as well as their grilled cheese sandwich. We're gonna be enjoying them with a couple cans of wine. <laughs> you won't see me whining about that. Well, as long as you bring a can-do attitude, there should be nothing to worry about. Hey, <laughs> why not? Milk Farm definitely is a cut to order cheese store. We always try to source new and different things that people can't find in a grocery store. This is definitely a combination of everything in my life, food experiences, travel experiences, etc. But in the heart of everything, we're a cheese store and we also sell delicious sandwiches and beer and wine. How did you become obsessed with cheese? We were just talking about how we have like Americanized diets. So I'm born and raised here in Los Angeles from immigrant parents from Korea. And so I grew up on a lot of rice, but because I was also American, I also grew up on a lot of craft singles. So I would literally open the rice cooker, unwrap the cheese and put it on top of the rice and then close <laughs> the cooker. Even today, a lot of times my breakfast is just like a flamed tortilla with a string cheese rolled up inside. Even though I own the store full of cheese, I eat a lot of string cheese. Really? Yeah. It's good to know that all cheese is still acceptable. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like it gets very intimidating to look into this case and see, oh, I've never seen all of these things before. What are these flowers? What is this mold? But just to let people know that it's just cheese and it could be accessible to everybody. Can you talk about the wine? I saw that you have, you know, bottles, but you also have cans of wine. I've been selling cheese now for 15 years and before nobody would have canned wine. Uh -huh. People were like, oh, I don't want to drink wine out of a can. But I would have to say that in the last like maybe two or three years, it's really, really gained some notoriety and the quality of them is fantastic. I think a lot of people don't realize it's two glasses of wine. So when they're <laughs> like, oh, how come this is $11? And you're like, well. Yeah, wow. it's like half a bottle. <laughs> yes, exactly. We do sandwiches every single day. We make our sandwiches on Bub and Grandma's baguettes. So the Hambry butter is a riff on a very popular French sandwich, which is just French ham and butter. We use a brie type cheese called fromage de Meaux from France. And then cracked pepper. We love cracked pepper here because it gives it like this nuttiness and this particular spice. We use French ham and then we make an herbed butter out of parsley and chives and we top the lid with that. And so it's a pretty simple sandwich. It's kind of like fat with fat in a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering about that. Like, do I really need to butter my cheese? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Sam is gonna to talk to you guys about the wine. He is our beverage buyer over here. First off for you with the HBB, we have the Waves White. This is made by Las Harris Wines, which is uh, Eric Weyerheim's company. It's the Waves series is something he does just for cans. It's a blend of Gruner, Chardonnay, and Chenin. Delicious, gonna go well with the fattiness of the brie and the uh, herbs and the butter. Cheers. Cheers, Steven. Mmm, okay. Oh, that's nice. Let's eat the sandwich. Cheers. Bread, butter, brie. That's terrific. Mm. Do you prefer sandwiches that have lots of stuff in them or sandwiches that have not a lot of stuff in them? Because honestly, I go back and forth, but I kind of think this is the superior proportion of a sandwich. Like simplicity, good and, ingredients. Uh, yeah, and every little component is perfect. Excellent butter, cheese, ham, all in one convenient package, a sip of refreshing, tantalizing wine. I'm drinking this like Sprite. Definitely feeling this wine. We also do our grilled cheese sandwich, which we're quite famous for. And that idea came from my travels in London. I was at the Borough Market and there was a cheese stall over there where they made a grilled cheese sandwich on poilon bread that they got from Paris. 
and they did a blend of British cheddars with their own mix of onions. That really resonated with me for a really long time. So when it came time to opening my own shop, I just really thought, well, we have to have a grilled cheese if we're gonna own a cheese store. So for days, we recipe tested different styles of American, American as far as like American artisanal cheese, not the not the one I used to put in the rice cooker, um, but we tested a whole bunch of different types of American artisanal cheeses, blends of onions, different types of onions. Why are you using multiple types of cheese? So it gives it more dimension. We use one cheese for its meltability, and then we use another one for like that sharpness and that really kind of brightness, and then another one for more of like an earthy, I like to say advanced flavor. And it's a very specific recipe of a particular part of cheese and a particular part of onions mixed together in a particular way with a certain amount that's on each bread, and it was it's tested down to like the gram. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. All right, so next up, we've got a fun wine from Coquelicot. They are located in Los Olivos. This is their Carbonic Carignan. Uh, it's a really lovely chill red, super bright, nice acidity to it. It's gonna really cut through the richness of the sandwich. It's really juicy, it's all certified organic. Cheers, Steven. Mmm, mm. that's just uh, juice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wine is made from juice. It is. This is like so juicy. <laughs> and the grilled cheese, Stephen. Oh, yeah. I'm going right in the middle of the sandwich. Mm. This is a very nice grilled cheese. So they weigh the cheese for each sandwich. Mm. Which I think you can really tell it is the perfect proportion of cheese. So many times I've gone to make a grilled cheese sandwich and it's either way too little right. or entirely too much cheese. Right. This is also not like a grilled cheese I've had before because I'm like, oh, that's like a American grilled cheese. Yeah. We're like in a different, different cheese world. This wine kind of reminds me of a lot of like communion wine I've had throughout my life. Where, yes. where it's like, yes. usually it's like, this is not good wine. But this one only has the positive attributes of that. There's something about just like that pure fruit taste. I'm feeling you but there, But it's man. like, this is delicious. The Milk Farm Cookies. Cheers. Damn. Damn, that's a good cookie, wow. A good salt. All right, Steven, you know what time it is. Cookie time. It is cookie time, but it's also another time. Canned wine fact. Did you know that there were attempts at producing and selling canned wines as early as the 30s? The problem, however, was that the high acidity and alcohol content of some of these particular wines ate away at the protective lining in the cans and caused them to spoil. I was thinking yeah. about that when we were drinking the wine. It's like, how does this not eat through the can? It was not until recent decades where canning technology improved that it caught on in popularity. All right, Steven, we're gonna be heading to our next spot tomorrow. We're gonna be heading to Otis to speak with June about her omelet, fried chicken, and French toast as well as glasses of delicious natural wines. Oh! Oras is modern Thai comfort food with my own twist in it. We feature the Thai breakfast. Most right. of the items here come from my childhood memories, what I like to eat when I grew up. What are some classic dishes in a Thai breakfast? I would say khao kai jiao. It's like Thai omelet. The fried chicken with sticky rice. If you go to Thailand on the street food, you can see fried chicken everywhere for breakfast. How did you come to start selling natural wine at Otis? Oh, I was fortunate to do collaboration with Jill from Domain LA. She's really knowledgeable about natural wine and helped me with the wine selection here. For a total novice, what is natural wine? Natural wine is essentially wine that is made with organically firm grapes at minimum, native yeast fermented, so no commercial yeast is added and nothing added or taken away. Natural wine is about how it's made, it's not necessarily about how it tastes. 
My Thai omelette is like crispy on the outside and soft in the middle. We have egg, ground chicken, some Thai seasoning, and white pepper. What makes it a Thai omelette versus like an American omelette? Thai omelettes, mostly we fry and then make it crispy. It's similar to deep fry actually, but in the small pot. And then when you eat with the steamed rice, and then dash with uh, some sriracha or hot sauce is good right. for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. For the kai jiao, I would go with skin contact wine. Cheers. Cheers, Stephen. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know Wait what I expected with skin contact. It's very common for skin contact wines to be orange, uh, but it's a common misconception that they are all orange. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Orange describes the color of the wine. Correct, Amunda. Uh, I'm tasting lemon peel. Isn't that crazy how grapes can just like bring notes of lemons and oak wood and you know? Yeah, it's like, why are they the only ones doing that? Well, shall we dig into the omelet? Yeah. I'm gonna crack into mine first. How about you? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa, this is very souffle-esque. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 That's terrific. It's savory. It's also a little sweet. It's like a savory, crispy cake. And with the wine, mm. it's tremendous. Fried chicken here is just like Southern Thai style. Here we call happy chicken. People that eat fried chicken here are always happy. <laughs> <laughs> we use chicken thigh. I debone it and then marinate with some spice, like different kinds of herbs, garlic, cilantro root, coriander seed, and cumin, some rice flour a little bit, and then marinate overnight. We fry it, top with fried shallot, and then serve with sticky rice. For fried chicken, I would pair with some sparkling. The fizziness will cut down mm. the fat of the fried food. To make it feel more refreshing. Refreshing, exactly. <laughs> Cheers, Stephen. Cheers. Oh my. Mmm. Where do you want to start? She did say eat with your hands. With a piece of chicken. No, dip, dip, dip. Mmm. Wow, the, the chicken. Look at that, it's so juicy. That chicken is awesome. The marinade is insane. How do you like it with the wine, Steven? I have the perfect analogy for this. Yeah. You know when you're at the beach and you're like playing in the sand and you're like super dirty? Yeah. And then you run to the waves and the waves just come crashing in yeah. and they wipe all of the sand off your feet. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel when I'm eating the chicken and then when I drink the wine. That is maybe the best analogy you've ever had on this thank, show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The omelet, the fried chicken, those are more traditional Thai breakfast foods. Right. But you also have like the French toast. Where did that come from? When I came here to the state, whenever I go to the breakfast place, I always love to order French toast. People are just curious that, oh, Thai restaurant with the French toast. How could it be? I said, the menu that Oda serve here now, it's just what I like to eat. For our French toast, we use the thick brioche bread. The batter is not that thick. We top with some fruit and then a homemade whipped cream. We made every morning. For Oda's mimosa, we use strawberry syrup and then fresh squeezed orange juice and then pour in sparkling wine. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa. Here we go. Wow, that's really good. This is beautiful. All right, Stephen, French toast. Please cut me a slice if you could. There you go. Thank you. Want some oh fruit? Oh my God. That's really good. The correct answer to waffles or pancakes <laughs> is French toast. It has the best qualities of both. Crispy exterior mm -hmm. and soft, squishy interior. Mm -hmm. You know those videos online of people like squishing their face with bread? Seen those no. videos? <laughs> no. There's like a certain like joy of like just soft textures hitting your face. This French toast is doing that for me on the inside of my mouth. Here you go, Adam. <laughs> wine fact. All right, Stephen. So we're familiar with the concept of terroir, how wine tastes like the place that it's grown in. Mm -hmm. Well, did you know that researchers can even identify markers in a bottle of wine that can trace its lineage back to specific trees that were cut and used to make the barrels that the wine was aged no in? No way. That's yeah. crazy. So you got your grapes, 
you make the wine, you're gonna put it in a barrel to age. Researchers can look at a bottle of wine and say that wine was barreled with a wood from over here. So the terroir not only is the grape, it's the vessel, and then the ancestry is everything. That's crazy. We are here in Los Alamos, and we are on our way to eat dinner at Bell's. You wanna go chat with Daisy and Greg? We're gonna be having dinner with a bottle of wine from a vineyard in the area. There is uni on the menu. Ooh, dee. As well as a steak au poivre. Bell's is a traditional French bistro in many ways, a California restaurant with a lot of French technique and cuisine influence. We wanted it to mimic something that you might find in wine country, uh, you know, driving through Burgundy. And we're also sort of in one of California's wine countries, right? Yeah. 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 It is in many ways kind of the younger sister to Napa, Sonoma, California wine country, very much known for Burgundian varietals, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. You know, in the last, I would say, five to 10 years started this new life. Younger winemakers that maybe couldn't afford to make wine up in Northern California moved here and started with, I don't wanna say more exciting wine, but I'll say it, more exciting wines. <laughs> and it's a really, really fun place to be operating a restaurant. So I'd love to ask you a little bit more about drinking wine with great food. You know, we're doing this episode that's about wine pairing, yeah. but we're not taking it too seriously, I want to say. <laughs> Mostly because I think we don't really know too much on the subject. <laughs> but if I want to come to a restaurant like Bell's and do it with intention to experience wine and food as a cohesive experience, yeah. where should I start? What should I be looking for? You know, yes, you can get into the scientific pairings and structure and tannins and talk about all these things that you talk about when you're tasting wine, but I think it's super important to drink what you like, and maybe you don't know what you like, but I think it's always important to ask the people that work in the restaurant, what do you guys think, what do you like? We have this idea of starting with sparkling, then drinking white, and then drinking red as the meal progresses but I think it's a pretty cool thing to choose something that you drink throughout a meal and then taste that wine with everything that you're eating. There are plenty of red wines that go with fish. People think that that's not a thing. <laughs> It may matter, but there is also a point where people make wonderful wines here and they make them with intent and they make them with amazing grapes and then so does the food. And so trying to have a conversation about, well, I'm having steak, I, I can't have this rosé. It's like, well, do you like rosé? It's, it's okay. Well, I think the fear is like, I don't want to accidentally mess up one yeah, or the like a, other. Like a FOMO yeah, situation. It's like, well, uh, yeah, if I'm spending this amount, I don't want to ruin it by accidentally doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess you kind of can't. That's what we think. Could you say a little bit about the wine that we're going to try today? Uh, so this is our Tyler Winery 2020 Pinot Noir from La Rinconada Vineyard. It is in Santa Rita Hills, that way over those hills. So like how many miles are we talking about? Uh, we are talking about seven miles. Oh. It just, that seven miles is kind of as the crow flies a little yeah. bit. Like it is over this canyon, a lot of bobcats. Oh yeah? Yeah. So you get a lot of those balanced dark fruits that you get from Pinot, but also there's a good amount of acidity to it as well. That is why a lot of Pinots, especially in this area, goes so well with the food that we serve here. Being able to balance these really elegant flavors, but also having enough backbone to both do something with uni, as well as still have something there for somebody who's looking to enjoy our steak au poif. Cheers, Stephen. Cheers. It tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's sweet, despite it not being sweet. Yeah. How do I? How do I yeah. I, I think that makes sense. So this is the caviar and, and uni crepe. This is how every person start their dinner at Bell's. It's Santa Barbara sea urchin with a creme fraiche milk crepe. And I wanted to do something that was different, but also approachable because there are a lot of people that come into the restaurant and have never had sea urchin. We make a very classic savory crepe and then we simply layer it with creme fraiche, some chives and the caviar and then the urchin sit on top of that. So you have like the caviar and the uni. How are you able to put those flavors together? They elevate one another in my mind. When the dish was made, there was this feeling that we're not talking about contrast, we're talking about it being harmonious in many ways. Mm -hmm. Where the texture of the uni is similar to the grape and the flavor profile of the uni is similar to the caviar. You're essentially eating this uni dish that has these other items that just elevate everything. Yeah. They just get like, turn it up to 11. All right, Steve, what do you want to do with this? <laughs> let's, let's cut it in All half. Right, yeah, I'm definitely gonna take the advice, cut my grape in two to uh, savor a little more. Okay. Oh yeah, that's nice. It looks like a cake. Hmm. That's a, 
delicious combination. Mm. The best way I could describe uni is that it is somehow simultaneously a fat and a fruit. Oh, that's good. Creamy, but also sweet and tasty. I had a very similar thought as you did in our interview. Do you really need the two most decadent seafood items on one crepe? Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the second dish that we're gonna have is also something that is always on our menu and is very much a nod to the origins of this restaurant, which is traditional French bistro, and it's a, a steak au poivre. And, uh, we use the calotte of beef, which is the cap of the ribeye. It is a incredibly flavorful cut of meat. It's not super expensive, and it has a little more texture. We season them with salt, pepper, and olive oil before we start service, so they're sitting there with that seasoning for a longer period of time. And then we sear the peppercorn side and a little bit of butter. And then we actually cook our steaks in broiler, or as we call it in most restaurants, a salamander. Really hot just for a couple of minutes. We make this very special apoive sauce. For service, we add a little bit of cream to fortify the sauce, and that's how we serve the steak. And frozen french fries, which I'm a firm believer in. And we cook them from frozen. We don't thaw them out first. Now, I've heard a lot of chefs talk about how frozen is actually the superior method. Method. Everything is much more consistent. It's a really good, it's a really good fry. Yeah. All right, let's drink the wine that cost one hundred fifty dollars with the fries <laughs> that were frozen. Right. Cheers. Wait, this fry is actually pretty unbelievable. It's, it's so like crispy. yeah, it has like the crispiness of like Arby's curly fries. It's honestly ah. exactly what I want to be eating with this wine. Mm. Salty, crispy fry. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. In some ways, the wine has become like a palate cleanser too. Like It's like I'm loading my mouth up with salt, and then I get to wash it away with a d delicious sip of wine. I'm gonna dip a fry in the sauce. That sounds like a great idea. Oh, the sauce is so much thicker than I thought it would Whoa. be. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Wait, why is this also not a sauce? Like you got like your ketchup, your honey mustard, your barbecue sauce, like they need to have the au pois sauce. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna grab a piece of steak now, Steven. Let's go. Cheers. Mm. It's delicious, yeah. <laughs> mm. Now with a little bit of wine, Steven. Oh. It tastes great. <laughs> I don't know how to be more specific. There's a soft pepperiness to the wine that is also present, obviously, in the steak being encrusted in pepper. But you also have the fruit of the wine and mm. then the sweetness of this sauce, both doing similar but different things. I did not see that correlation, but I, I taste it. What an unbelievable crust. Oh, the texture is just so satisfying to bite into, and it's it's like so it's like crunchy, like stepping in leaves in the fall. <laughs> You know, like that satisfaction I'm having with my mouth and the steak. Yeah, it's like you're walking a straight path, but then you see the leaves and you make a diversion to crunch them. Absolutely. <laughs> the last thing I didn't fully appreciate about the concept of wine pairing, I never appreciated how much it comes down to your preference yep. and what you want to experience in a given meal. Yep. It's like your mouth is the terroir also. Mouthwar. Adam, you want this piece of steak? It's really good. <laughs> Steven, we're here at the Tyler Wines, the wine that we just had. May Estate, it's time to put the cork in another Worth It episode. No, 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 we, we, we finished the bottle here. We finished the bottle. So Steven, who's your most worth it wine pairing at its given price? It's starting to rain, which is a little poetic here. My worth it winner, Otis. Thick bread. It's like gigantic French toast. My worth it winner? Bells? I don't know if I could eat uni again without caviar, <laughs> to be perfectly frank with you. <laughs> trying to sound like me a little bit. And the wine becomes a mini activity throughout the meal. Mm. I'm gonna eat a fry with a little bit of wine. Then I'm gonna eat a fry with some sauce and a little bit of wine. Then I'm gonna have some steak. Yes. Adam, who's your worthy winner? No problem. We just finished a wonderful meal. I know. I got nothing to whine about. Not even the rain. <laughs>